Growing up singing helped her muscle structure develop young. And because she was doing pop music, which is not classical, it's very front of the face mask. It's very closed chords. It's adding mass. It's adding husk. And when she does go high, she has a choice. She can either break into like a head tone, an airy tone, or she can slam it. You and I can't slam it unless we've been training a long time. Then we can trust what our middle voice is or our mix. But she sounds like she's in chest voice, so don't let it fool you. She's not in a true chest voice when she leans in like that. It's kind of hard to find a Christina Aguilera performance I have not seen. But I found one. It's the 50th anniversary of Disneyland, and she was a Mouseketeer. So here she is coming on out, and I'm going to do a voice teacher reacts. And we go into the 50s swing. Nice. Head voice. Ow. Nice. Ow. Nice. Okay, I'm stopping. I'm Renee Urbanovich, and this is a Voice Teacher Reacts on Christina Aguilera. I can't tell what year it was, um, but it was the 50th anniversary. She looks great, and she's taking a song that we all know and love that we've had for generations, right? This is from, I, I want to say, the, uh, the 50s. And um, it's been done many, many different ways, but obviously this is going to be Christina Aguilera's style. And you know how she adds lots of licks and lots of trills, lots of hard, soft, hard, soft. Um, and so I'm expecting that. We'll see if that's what I'm going to get. But it's very family. You can see the pictures of the kids. And it's um, very reminiscent. It's kind of um, retro, right? It reminds us of the past. So it already has this great feeling to it. It's a very... Um, wishful, wistful song. So we're going to react to that. And then we're going to react to somebody we love doing it in a new way, in a different way. And she's making it a lot more cool, if you ask me. So anyway, here we go. We're going to keep going at Disneyland. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I love it. So the whole thing is kind of just nice and very Christina until right there when she does the key change and then she does this long phrase and does not stop. And that's what keeps us at the edge of our seats. So device wise, she's obviously staying in chest voice and she's very harsh in her chest voice. We love that huskiness that Christina brings us. And then she adds lots of licks and she gets real airy, real soft. She does little tricks back and forth, right and left. And um, that's what we love about her. So aside from that, um, she's doing the microphone thing where she pulls the mic back, right? And um, now, like, you know, this now we have the mics here and here. And so we're being trained not to holler. If you're a singer, maybe your voice teacher is telling you that you're not supposed to blow and push and holler. You're supposed to compress and keep it in like a little pocketed version of chest voice. And you're allowed to keep the microphone right here. And if you have enough control, that's fine. You don't have to go like that. I'm not saying Christina Aguilera does not have control, but I'm saying it's pretty old school to be using the microphone like that. So currently, if your voice teacher is telling you, don't do that with the mic, don't 
let the let the sound engineer ride the vocals if he must or she must or they must. But in this case, um, I don't know what year this is, but currently we are supposed to sing with compression and resistance so that we're not yelling, so that we don't clip on the microphone, so we don't blow it out. So that's just a little note on the side for you if you're learning, if you're just trying to figure all this out. So one of the best things about Christina Aguilera is that she can bellow in what sounds like chest voice. And we respond to that and we just, I love it. But because she started singing so young, she's really not in something we, that's true chest voice. She started singing really, really young, which means those pop sensibilities had to be uh, designed in her as she grew up. And as you may or may not know, when you start technique at a young age, it just lives in you. And so if you've ever taken her master class or talked to anyone who did, she's really big on give it all you've got, give it all you've got, because she could because growing up singing helped her muscle structure develop young. And because she was doing pop music, which is not classical, it's very front of the face mask, it's very closed chords, it's adding mass, it's adding husk. And when she does go high, she has a choice. She can either break into like a head tone, an airy tone, or she can slam it. You and I can't slam it unless we've been training a long time. Then we can trust what our middle voice is or our mix. But she sounds like she's in chest voice, so don't let it fool you. She's not in a true chest voice when she leans in like that. She is in a very trained, experienced, expert middle mix voice that just sounds like chest voice. So... Two notes, watch out with the mic if you're learning. And remember, she's not truly in chest. Do not holler. Um, but yeah, if you want to learn how to do her licks, you put, um, you watch a show like this, a YouTube show, and you slow it down to either 0.5 or 0.75. And you sit and you listen to the licks over and over. You immerse yourself in the genre that you want to sound like. And then you practice those licks. You can also do scales, but... Uh, why bother looking for a scale when you've got Christina Aguilera as your teacher on YouTube? Okay, going along here after that fantastic bridge that was so well written and beautifully done. And another device, number three, is to not breathe when the audience is expecting you to breathe. Let's rewind it. Here it comes. That's a B flat to the B ah! and then she takes it higher and then breathes. Okay. Okay. That was nice. Fate! I wasn't expecting that note. Uh, like a bolt out of the blue. Fate. That's the real note. Fate. And I was expecting her to go fate, but she went even higher. Fate. What did she do? She did the higher note that I wasn't expecting. Here she goes. Fate. See? Watch out. Nice, soft and airy. Ooh, nice. Okay, so instead of saying star and then breathing, she said star your, and she brought your in before you expected it. That's a great device. Make note of that. Let's listen to it again. So nice. She's remaking the song in a very typical Christina Aguilera fashion, but these little tiny tricks she's doing just make it all new. And we're human beings and we need things to be novel. We need everything to be new for it to touch us, right? We like novelty. That's part of creativity. And she's taking all those risks, showing us something new. Will we like it? That's a risk. That's another component of creativity. So I took it back. Here we go. Yo, see that? And she doesn't breathe. Oh, they do. 
they come true. Oh, I love the giggle at the end. Okay, you know, I just picked a song that I hadn't heard. I love that song. I love the key she did it in. There was nothing hugely challenging about it. You could probably learn it in this key. There was uh, a lot of soft licks in head voice, which is so fun. Um, she's a great teacher. She's a great person to learn from. But remember, do not try and do husky chest. Let it settle itself in middle or head voice until you get some strength and some sturdiness there in the middle and the head voice. Then you can start adding resistance and adding chord going down the longitude to where you can sound husky like Christina Aguilera. You know, she has been around so long that she can literally do no wrong. And when she enters the stage, you all feel it. We are together with her. No one is judging her. Everyone wants to embrace whatever it is she's going to deliver. And today at Disneyland, it's celebratory. And remember, that's what music was originally for. Celebration and ritual and worship and um, tradition and all of that. So it's really nice that instead of just entertainment right now, she's really serving a function with her voice and who better than a Mouseketeer. So everything is quite fitting and it's lovely that she's so lighthearted and cute and she's being, um, you know, family friendly, which I love. Um, Christina Aguilera changed the face of pop music when she came in with all of the licks and all of the husky trills and um, all of the honesty when she started writing songs about her own family life. So here she can do something that is somewhat benign, somewhat just sweet and very Disney, but she carries with her all of that life experience and all of um, that honesty, authenticity, and she's Christina Aguilera. So I just loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And if you're learning to sing and you're trying to figure out what she's doing that you can't do, slow it down. Remember the registers, chest voice, middle voice, head voice. And remember when you start singing really, really young, that little baby voice of yours can handle a lot of kind of screaming. But then as you age, you need to know that you can't scream. And because she started singing pop so young, she just merged into her more adult voice with very well-oiled vocal cord muscles, right? She knew how to sing pop. It's not like she went straight from classical as a singer to pop and she didn't know how to fill in the gaps. That middle area is dangerous. I wouldn't have a job without it. So if you are trying to figure out what she's doing, remember, it may sound like chest, but it's really, really middle. And she's so experienced. In my world, there hasn't been um, a time without Christina Aguilera as a singer. It's been a long, long time. So I hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, and share. And go ahead and tell me who you want me to do next. See you next time. I'm Renee Urbanovich. Bye. Bye.